Hello and welcome back to part two of our Meta Sounds tutorial series. In the first part, we introduced you to Meta Sounds and got a simple music tracks playing in and out and showing how to trigger different tracks in. But now we're going to show you how rather than cutting them in, we're going to fade them in instead using crossfades. So I'm going to show you how to do that all with inside of the Meta Sounds asset. So let's take a look. So in the first part of our Meta Sounds video, we looked at making it be able to play two tracks at a push of a button but it just cuts into it well what if we done a fade of some kind well to do a fade we can use a cross fade node instead so i'm going to right click search for cross fade and we're going to do two because we've only got two inputs and i want to put in the mono into in zero and out mono there to in one and then this rather than mixing it will go into the out mono output. So we're no longer using a mixer, we're now using a crossfade instead. The crossfade value indicates how it fades between 0 and 1. So if it goes to 0, it'll go to 0. If it's 1, it'll go to 1, and in betweens as well. So I don't want it to stop the second track, the first track, sorry, when I play the second one. So I'm going to disconnect that. I want to both be playing at the same time, essentially. But this time, I want to change the audio to fade in. Now the fade needs to be controlled by this crossfade value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable to store this crossfade value. You can do a couple of ways. You can either create the variable over here on the variable list on the left, or you can drag out from the pin itself and promote to a graph variable. And there's our crossfade value. I then want to go back to my input start here for the on play second, and I want it now to change this value. So if I want to change a value of any variable, you can do that by searching for the value node. You'll see value float. So when the sound comes in here, it's going to set the sound to wherever I want. And I put in like one, for example, it's target value. And then on set, once it's finished setting it, it'll go onwards to play. Okay, uh, but that doesn't actually change the variable. That gives us this output value instead. And what we want to do is we want to connect that to this crossfade value. So I can drag this out and try and plug it into here, but it won't let you straight away. One annoying thing about MetaSounds is that that trick doesn't work. What you have to do instead is hold down Shift and drag it out, and it'll make it a set node, and you can plug it into the output node there. So when it goes into here, it'll set the value to 1, and it'll crossfade over and out into our wave player. But that's just going to instantly cut it. That's going to cut from 0 to 1. There's no fade there at all. It's just going to cut straight away. So how do we interpolate this value? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do an interp node. Interp2. And interp2, as you can see, has a value, target, and interp time. So what the interp2 is going to do is it's going to take a value in from the target and output the value here. Now, this set value is going to change it instantly to this target value of 1 which is no good. It's just going to output it and go straight into here. So what I need to do is output this to a different value. I need to output my interp2 here to the crossfade value there. And then the values I'm setting over here are going to be the target values I want here. So I'm going to promote this one to a graph variable as well. And we'll call it target. And I'm going to set the target on my output node here. So outputs from zero to one, uh, sorry, to one, get set to target, and they'll interp over, let's do three seconds, three seconds from the target to the crossfade value, which then is going to fade in these two values here. So let's take a look at that in action in game. Hit one. And when I hit one again, it should fade over three seconds from one track to the other track. There we go we can now do a simple fade and it's all by using this interp node notice how the interp node doesn't need to be plugged into anything um it, it just it's just running all the time whilst the music play, while sound is playing played um and you're just changing the target value it by this value node here so that changes the value goes to here and then cross fades here 
But let's say you want to change the crossfade value manually yourself inside your blueprint code. Well, you can do that again by using inputs and we click on plus an input and we're going to leave it as a float this time and we're going to do fade like so. And if I drag this one into my scene, it's going to look different from this one. If I drag this out, you'll see I'm going to get a little dial here that can fade the tracks in and out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crossfade here and duplicate it, put the out into in zero and the fade into the crossfade value, then out into here. So I've got this crossfade doing the, the fading blending that we've already got, but this fade is going to trigger the sound to mix between zero and one, which means one could be in blank means it's going to go quiet. So let's go push simulate. And if I were to grab this dial, I can move it up and you can hear it fade out and fade in. Okay. And that's because this is an input. Now, the beauty of inputs is that means you can access it inside of blueprints. So let's take a look at how that is achieved. So let's go back to our player character. And we've got this execute trigger parameter. It works almost exactly the same. You need a reference to the music, which you've got here. And we're going to do execute. Uh, not execute, sorry. Um, let's do float. Set float parameter. Uh, this one. Yep. And we're going to set it to fade. And I can set it to whatever I want. So if I want to go to 0.5, for example, I can now quieten the whole thing down. And that can be time to timelines, health, whatever you want to do. So for example, in my new game Mimic, the heartbeat that player has when they run out of energy and stamina is tied to their stamina meter. So I'm just feeding their stamina meter into the meta sounds and that is increasing the fade of the heartbeat in and out of the character. So let's take a look at that in action. Push one to play. And when I push one again, it will fade in, blend the two together, but then it will also go into half the loudness. Okay, there we go. So there you go, a really easy, simple way to cross fade, and it doesn't involve any blueprint coding inside of any actor. And uh, if I really like using the Meta Sounds asset now, it's really cool. So what we're going to do in the next part is we're going to take it a little bit further and take a look at those extra bits on the side of the wave player, such as the cue points. So we're going to take a look at cue points and look at what they do and what they mean, and show you how we can use them. You can watch the next part right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.